All right, now that we've seen the results of, uh, of our three magazines, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break the rifle down now and uh, we'll show you how we're gonna do our modification. The first thing we're gonna do is a basic field strip. So we wanna get the dust cover off. Okay. Recoil spring out, bolt carrier group. We also want to get the cleaning rod out. That's one, one positive with this hand guard is you can still use the, uh, the cleaning rod. We started already, so we already took two screws out of the other side. You got to take four screws out, two here and two on the other side. Um, and doing some pre-checks, we, uh, we already started. four screws out the upper portion comes off then we want to get our our gas tube out of here all right that leaves us with four screws here four out real quick now what transfers heat so well is the direct contact to the barrel and when we look at what is directly contacting the barrel, it's the, uh, the two main clamps. So the one in the front and the one in the back. Now, it, it's two sections. You have the upper portion, which is this. So th this is contacting the barrel as well as this one. And the two lower ones. Now, to get the lower hand guard off, we need to turn this arm the other way. Which, uh, using a tool proper way here, we're going to get our little arm up. And with that, we slide this forward. And there it goes. Alright, now as we look down here, if we can see this line going across here. That's where the barrel's contacting. Same on the front, and same on this side and this side. You can see a line going right across. That's where the barrel's contacting. So, and that's where our heat transfer is coming in from the, those lines, as well as uh, the two caps that are holding us down. So, what we want to do is we want to lessen the contact point, and to do that, we're going to take a Dremel, and we're just going to Put a beveled edge on each side here, right where that line is. You know, not too much. We want to take maybe a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch on this side, as well as this side, on all four pieces. So again, we, about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch we're going to take off, right where that line intersects. And the same thing here, and that will provide less contact area. The next thing we're going to do and you can see the the uh, screw holes all right now we, we don't really want to mess up the screws and we don't ever really have to take them out they're a part of the lower guard and you can see the the bottom of the screw there is down a little bit what we can do is open that hole just a little bit and that's going to further reduce some of our area now uh, my idea is using a larger drill bit and we're not going to plow down to the screw. We're just going to open the top portion a little bit with a larger drill bit on all four screw holes. So by reducing these contact points, we're going to reduce our heat transference from the barrel to the handguard. And the same thing with the caps. We're going to take our Dremel and we're going to cut about a sixteenth 
to an eighth inch beveled edge on each side and that's going to reduce our contact point up here. So we're going to pause for a moment and we, when we come back we'll show you our final results. Alright, we're back. You can see we got our edges ground down in the uh, caps for the upper side. We also uh, we, we did four little grind marks along where the barrel is touching. So the barrel touches in four places in the lower hand guard and we basically we just wanted to limit the physical surface that the the barrel was touching. We still have plenty of meat in between uh, each of these grind marks here for the barrel to touch so it's going to be plenty sturdy. Now I, you know obviously it's not my most beautiful machine work but it's going to serve its purpose. And once we mount this up, uh, this lower hand guard uh, will probably never be off again until you're ready to replace a barrel. Because you don't need to remove this to pull the gas tube out or do any cleaning. So uh, we're going to get ready to install here. We'll just pause for a moment. All right. For install, I would suggest getting your... Uh, receiver down on a square surface like this so this way when you go to slip your hand guard in it will be nice and square because as we see how do I get it going the right way yeah it's right way. it can move a little bit side to side until you get it tightened up so by laying the receiver down on a square flat surface we can uh, help our alignment as we get it on there uh, now when we put our cap screws on I would suggest using a either a high temp Loctite or medium thread Loctite on these four screws here so we're going to go ahead and get that mounted up and we'll be back Another thing that will help your alignment is uh, getting this front support in. You don't necessarily have to lock it down yet, but you can. Uh, you can still move the hard hand guard around with this lockdown, but it's up to you. But just getting it popped into place will help the alignment. And also, we can check our surface right here and make sure that's nice and straight on both sides. And... That'll help us out. Now, when you go to tighten these down, you want to be watching the gap on this side and this side as we tighten it down. And we want to try and keep it even. So you can see we have a little gap down here and here. So you want to run both bolts down kind of snug and, and try and keep your gap even on both sides. If your gas tube's like mine, you should probably have to press down until you hear an audible click. With that done, now we can put our uh, our lever down into its proper position and finish assembling the rest of the rifle. We'll be back. With our rifle reassembled here, we'll have to make a, a trip out to the range and test our results. We'll be back. Alright, uh, we're doing some testing here. Our gun's pretty cold right now. Uh, right now we're at 68 degrees. We have our three magazines and we're going to shoot and take our temperatures and see how we do. Alright. Ready? Uh huh. So we got 82, 85, we'll go with our second magazine now. Oh gosh. Hold on, let me make sure my thingies are in, because it's super loud. 
Hold on, hold on. Ready? Yep. There's particles everywhere. Oh. Hey, we're up to about 100 degrees. You can smell fire. Legit. It smells like somebody just burned somebody's hair while, um... We can still touch it, though. Feels pretty good. Are you sure? Yeah. All right, so after three magazines? About 140, 50. We've made some improvement. Still kind of hot to touch. Ah, Jesus! In conclusion, you can see we made some progress. Uh, not a perfect fix, obviously. I do think it's possible to totally remove the heat from it, or damn near totally. But it's a greater project than I think that we're going to take on because it really just doesn't bother me enough. But the lower hand guard is held on to those clamps through the four screws. And you can see the clamp is down here. The clamps are quite wide on the top and bottom. And that's where the hand, the hand guard's physically touching those clamps. It's a lot of meat there that's touching. I think if you remove the lower off of those clamps and added a gasket material between the clamp and the hand guard itself, then you would only have a tiny bit of heat transfer through the screw. Not enough to probably even warm, uh, warm up the hand guard. The only problem with that, though, is these lower blocks are angled. And if you were to just space them out, even with a thin gasket, it's going to change how the hand guard sits. And the hand guard does have... A, uh, a a ledge that fits inside of the receiver as well as the the clamp up here on top that it's going to change how the hand guard sits so those two things may not be right afterwards as it stands right now everything aligns and clamps perfectly so to be able to add a gasket material between the hand guard and, and that uh the lower clamps um I think you would have to machine down the edges of those clamps, you know, I, I, whatever your thickness your gasket is, you, you would have to do some measuring, thinking, and, and cut the edges down on those clamps a little bit to be able to get the hand guard to fit right afterwards. And, and for us, I, I just don't think that's uh, it's not enough of a problem, particularly because I don't even really hold the hand guard. I tend to hold the magwell. So... And on top of it, I'm not using a full automatic, and I don't dump endless magazines. So, uh, for how I shoot, it doesn't really get that hot anyway. So, uh, I think we're we're going to roll with what we got, and uh, we're pretty pleased with it. So, at any rate, I hope we uh, provided some information for you. Thanks a lot. Texas Gunsmith out.